Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 7 of Cracking the CSWE. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating drawings and builds and materials from complex assemblies. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be reminded of any future videos. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. Before we start, remember that all the files are available in the description down below. So if we take a look at our assembly file here, we can go up to the new file button, select the drop down menu, and then select create a new drawing using our part slash assembly. Once we are in the drawing file, we can first add an isometric view from our view palette so that we can have a view of our assembly in the drawing. Now let's say we want to take a look at the bill of materials, which is what this video is going to cover. Uh, a bill of materials is just a table of parts and subassemblies with listed properties for each part and subassembly. To create one, we can go to the table toolbar, which you can add in, and then select bill of materials. There are a few intuitive options for the creation of the table. All we are going to look at right now, though, is the template, the configuration, and the bill of material type. We will keep the template that is used, the aluminum bushings, and then select only parts for the BOM type. Then, for the configuration, we can select the aluminum bushings. We can place the table, and now we will start looking at editing and adding to this bill of materials. Right now, the listed properties should be the item number, the part number, which is just the name of the part, and the quantity of the part in the assembly. The description property should be blank. There are only a few things we need to know when talking about creating and editing bills of materials. First of all is how to create new columns with properties. To add in a new column to the right of the description property, we can click the letter above the property, which is C, select insert, and then select column right. Then a menu will appear asking for the column type, which is just the property that we'll be putting in the column. There are a few properties we can add, but we'll just add a custom property of the configuration each part is in. As an example, we can see that the only part that changes between configurations are the bushings. We could do the same thing of any property that's asked for us using the same method. Now let's say we want to edit our bill of material. We can simply click in the top left corner, which will open the property manager for the table. Let's say instead of the parts being listed by themselves, we want each subassembly listed as well, with the parts listed under each subassembly. To do this, we can use the indented option, which will list each subassembly with its parts underneath it. We have a few numbering options. No numbering, which just numbers the subassemblies. Detailed numbering, which numbers each part under its subassembly using the number of the subassembly and a period, and then the number of the part. And flat numbering, which numbers the parts and subassemblies unexclusively. Let's choose detailed numbering. As well, just to show how, let's change the configuration to nylon bushings. In an exam situation, it's likely that something referring to a BOM location will be asked. For example, you might have to change the bill of material settings and say what number a certain part is listed as, or what the value of a property is for a certain part. Out of all the things tested on the CSWE exam, this is an easier section compared to, say, springs, which are much harder than this. I would practice by yourself creating bills of materials for assemblies you have, just to get a better feel of how to use them, as well, using them in real-life examples of your own assemblies will greatly improve your abilities with them and also improve your appreciation for their usefulness. To end, I will ask a very simple question just to check your understanding of the bill of material layout. Which subassembly is the base part in? If you said the base assembly, then you're right, and you understand the system the BOM uses to organize its subassemblies and parts. Thank you so much for watching episode 7 of Cracking the CSWE. At this point, we're really done with assemblies, and we're going to start looking at surfaces. In the next video, we're going to be looking at cutting with surfaces, and then after that, surface modifications. So, I'll see you in those videos.